Your Excellency, the Finance Minister of Sri Lanka, Mr. Mangalas Tamaravira, Sri Lankan Ambassador to Qatar, Mr. ASP Lenage, distinguished guests, dear friends, fellow bankers, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure and privilege to be an integral part of this interesting and exciting evening. I had the privilege of sharing quickly a few words with the finance minister. And we had a very intense press conference today afternoon. Some of the questions which they asked and my answers, if I reflect again, I think we have done the keynote. The minister has got very limited time, so I'm going to be prescriptive. Why we are the first Gulf Bank? What is so special about this relationship between the Gulf and Sri Lanka? That was one of the television crew asked me today. The second one was, where do you see the opportunity in terms of foreign direct investment for Sri Lanka and why? How do you see the Sri Lankan corporates or small and medium-sized entrepreneurs can take advantage of Doha Bank presence here. What and how you plan to add value to the financial sector here? These are the four important questions. I can be selective on my reply. Why Sri Lanka? You all know about Sri Lankan economy, but the issue remains. In bilateral terms, it's with the changing face of the world, Sri Lanka is in a very defining moment. Globalization, deregulation, technology and consumerism is redefining the global space. Even after 10 years of financial crisis, we have seen the financial economies are converting as real. Real economies are redefining the scope and performance. Communism has changed. Capitalism is altercating its form and substance. Mixed economies are redefining. Producing gross welfare to the mass is, is all about political stability and financial stability. With the digital makeup, digital governance is a telling story today to redefine the, the business model, financial service or otherwise. It's a huge transformation in the world. The Millennium Development Goal has changed into Sustainable Development Goals. World at large is in the crossroads in terms of reorganization. While the globalization era has given enormous amount of values, we have seen now economic nationalization. That's the word American administration uses now. Your country comes first. That's the priority in terms of global trade or investments, banking or finance. This is the disruption to the universal values which we set in all these years. While we are living in a borderless village, absolutely borderless, technology is interconnected. We are no more location-centric. We are information-centric. We are not product-centric, we are consumer-centric, citizenship-centric. And global citizenship is the right word to use to bring in prosperity to humanity and human dis dignity. The certain missions to bring in universal values in terms of eradication of extreme poverty, gender equality, universal health care, universal education, environment sustainability, these are not ordinary issues. These are extraordinary issues. This is the backdrop in which countries are redefining it. Political Framework is getting redefined. Policy decision makers are redefining and essentially producing gross welfare to the mass. And that's what the world at large we are in. In the midst, the Gulf states, which produces 45% of the world oil, 20-25% of the world gas today, is in a different spree. The deflection of oil price in 2014 and Essentially, the alternates, including renewables, solar, wind, or biofuel, biomass, are all redefining the space itself. Meanwhile, when the oil price was costing over hundred dollars, the Gulf states accumulated huge amount of investable surplus, nearly one third of the global sovereign funds. Two point three trillion emanates from the Gulf states. 
Our purpose of this submission today as a representation is to bring the bilateral commerce between Sri Lanka and, and Qatar to start with. It's a huge opportunity. Qatar and the rest of the Gulf states with their investable surplus invested in multiple markets and multiple locations. Here is a proximity. Here is human capital investments Sri Lanka has done. We have seen the reflection of 140,000 hardworking blue collars and white collars in, in Qatar. We are seeing the possibility of further scaling up. Ambassador Lena Gay has been working to scale it up to 300,000. We are looking at op opportunities in terms of infrastructure investments. We are looking at opportunity for energy security. We want to make sure we use the strategic direction, strategic advantage Sri Lanka has got in geographical terms. It's a huge, huge opportunity if you recognize whether it's Indian Ocean or Arabian Sea or Bay of Bengal, that aviation or maritime, this is a huge strategic locational advantage which you have, and Gulf is the bilateral opportunity which you should build. And we are proud to be the first Gulf financial house to be here, because that's where we want to promote the bilateral trade and bilateral investments, then banking becomes an integral part of the overall functional makeup. If you look at the, a small country like Qatar, I was telling His Excellency, the Finance Minister, a small country with 2.7 million population, producing nearly $200 billion as the GDP. Over $350 billion as the sovereign funds, investable surplus. Nearly $40 to $45 billion as the central bank reserves. It's a double rated country. And we have disruptions between, within the Gulf definition as Gulf Cooperation Council countries. The six countries put together, Oman, United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Bahrain, and Kuwait, all the six states put together, GCC, today is in disarray. A country of s small, in terms of area, 11,943 square kilometers, got into a transformation. Finance Minister was mentioning that he he saw the transformation 20 years before he visited. I invited him to be there again. He will see the huge changes. As you rightly said, the Emir of Qatar was here in, in March 2015. His Highness was here and he has signed multiple agreements. Youth Affairs Sports, again, we are going to host 2022 and media. That was the starting point. And diplomatic relationship between Qatar and Sri Lanka was initiated in 1976. But the real transformation of Qatar was in 1995. The Emir of Qatar was here. In, and many times the private visit of these royal family members are taking place, which you all know. His Excellency, the governor is also here. Let's, let's welcome him, His Excellency. Governor, please join us. And I had a great privilege of meeting him today. Like the finance minister has mentioned, he was outlining the, the bigger opportunity for Sri Lanka. It, was, it has come at a very defining moment. And Sri Lanka is positioned in. And he was also trying to explain the changing phase of Sri Lanka. The opportunities in terms of investments, what all we can do as a financial house. And he was trying to enlighten where and how the Gulf investments can play a role in, in Sri Lanka's bilateral relationships, trade or investments. Coming back to the track, in terms of Qatar underlying economics, then I will converge. First, I'm going to explain the economic fundamentals of Qatar. Then we'll see how to build this strategic partnership between Sri Lanka and Qatar and the Gulf, the bigger picture again, in terms of trade or investments, banking can play a professional intermediary role. If you look at the underlying economics of Qatar, it's $200 billion of GDP. When the oil price was costing over $100, the investable surplus, which was built in between 2000 to 2014, was over $300 billion. When Qatar recognized in 1996, conserved huge LNG resources, it didn't put flyovers or aerodrums, it, it borrowed money. It issued 
Islamic sukuk and borrowed money and invested in the LNG, liquefied natural gas. Today we have the third largest reserves, but second largest exporter of LNG. That has changed the complete business model of Qatar. Huge transformation in terms of economic progression. And the opportunity is still ahead. Today we are producing 77 million metric ton and 800,000 barrels of oil, which is equivalent to 6 million barrels of oil. Imagine, a small country of less than 200 million people has got ability to generate revenue, nearly 6 million barrels of oil. You can extrapolate and see the opportunity in terms of revenue generation. When it comes to the blockade which I mentioned, it was a result of Qatar's belief in social justice, freedom, and functional democracy as a transparent a policy, a political functionary, it has changed the complexion of the Gulf since 1996. The reflection in terms of political progression, whether it is Security Council presidency, whether it is United Nations General Assembly presidency, it was Qatar for many years. When it comes to Darfur or Lebanon or Libya or Egypt, Qatar was supporting functional democracy. That has that has been the root cause for the disruptions what we are seeing today. When it comes to social progression, education was well built in. As I said, when Qatar borrowed money in the international market by issuing Islamic sukuk, they invested in the education, not in flyovers or aerodrams. Having realized LNG is a major thrust to extrapolate, which they did, the next step was to improve the social progression. His, Our Highness, Sheikh Abuza, as in started engaging in educational activities for downtrodden around the world and within Qatar, world-class institutions like Cornell, Texas A&M, Virginia Common, Georgetown, Carnegie Mellon, to say a few of the institutions. Qatar Foundation was set in, investing in education. Today, you have a very upcoming knowledge society in the making. When it comes to economic progression, which is a bread and butter of Qatar's economy today, it has got very strong discipline. When the disruption started, when the land, single landline was closed by Saudi Arabia, and the siege countries, inclusive of United Arab Emirates and, and Bahrain, Qatar had very little option to move from plan A to plan B. That's where the opportunity for Sri Lanka comes in. I'm giving you the backdrop for it. Food security was ensured by Saudi Arabia, and transshipment was done from Dubai today. After one year, it was June 5th last year, the finance minister asked me how long the, the, the blockade is on. It's over a year now. The reflection today is we are back in track. The rating agencies have changed their outlook from stable to negative when the blockade was on. Today, Fitch has re-rated again as stable. It's a double rated country, and the banks like us are A-rated. Essentially, the the blockade itself has turned out to be an opportunity. How this opportunity can be leveraged for Sri Lanka's advantage is the purpose of our submission tonight. Let's start with the food security. I, I mentioned about the strategic advantage. In fact, the governor was so proud to present how important the strategic location of Sri Lanka is, is important for the world community, especially for the Gulf. While we recognize Belt and Silk Route, Belt and Road, initiated by China is a bigger opportunity for Sri Lanka. We understand that. On account of the proximity and human capital investments, the bilateral opportunity in terms of aviation hub creating for as Sri Lanka and as investment partnership for Qatar is very much there. And that's going to trigger reorganization in terms of tourism for Sri Lanka. And it's, it's a good commercial venture as well. Imagine the investment partnership because we have limited capacity to invest within the frame. That's why the diversification is a structured solution on the GDP breakdown itself, from oil and gas to non-hydrocarbon. And that's where we can leverage on a Sri Lankan locational advantage. And again, when it comes to maritime opportunities, shipbuilding, you have the ingredients. And that's where we can build this partnership. Apart from Qatar Navigation, which we call Milaga as a public listed company, Gas transportation itself is a bigger business. 
around the world, 77 million metric ton we are consigning to Japan, South Korea, Singapore, you know, again, India, in Europe, 20% of the electric supply comes from Qatar for United Kingdom. It's a huge LNG terminal has been built in. Huge vessels have been designed and delivered by Korean agencies. We can look at the opportunity, how shipbuilding can be converging as an important opportunity for Qatar to invest and make the ships, ship production here. Gas transportations can be supplemented through this additional advantage. And that's one locational opportunity and the, and the grown craftsmanship which you have. When it comes to infrastructure creations, airport or seaport, road or rail, public-private partnership model can be created. Mind you, the Gulf states are flooded with money. At the same time, they need to diversify from oil to non-oil. As I mentioned, one-third of the global sovereign investments, out of $6.6 .6 trillion, $2.3 trillion lies in the Gulf on account of the oil richness or gas. That needs to be diversified in multiple markets, and multiple sectors. If I say $350 billion has been invested, if it is say, let us say Qatar has done it in UK, it is in real estate, like Shah, the tallest building in UK, the American embassy, and again, HSBC building, Chelsea barracks. If it is banking sector, it is Barclays. If it is aviation, it's British Airways, to name the few, one country. If it is Germany, it is Volkswagen and Porsche. Qatar has invested, Hochif, another construction company. And Singapore, Singapore, they committed $5 billion way back in 2004. Qatar has, was planning to invest $5 billion, and the, the mentor prime minister, Lee, was there within six months the money was pumped, and investment partnership was created between Qatar and Singapore. And you have seen Fairmont or Raffles Hotels, or investment partnership through Tamasic, the Singapore investment arm of the government, was building investment partnership, and they were together investing. That's the kind of model we want to initiate. It's an important opportunity. When it comes to infrastructure creation, you need billions of dollars for infrastructure creation whether express highways, whether it is, again, airport, or additional terminals of airports, or seaport, again. You need reliable investment partners. Gulf is a source where you can tap. And Qatar is, is an important opportunity where you have already invested 150,000 Sri Lankans already operating. And that's where trade and investments can be interconnected. Uh, human capital can be interconnected. And that's what the submission between the political leaders have converged last year. The Commerce Minister was also here, and I am delighted to invite both the, the Finance Minister as well as Central Bank Governor to visit Qatar. That's on the infrastructure side, we can build this partnership. When it comes to other areas, we have huge opportunities. Industrial side, whether you know, food security is an, is a, food processing is an important opportunity. They have to have food security in a sustainable forms, how they can create sustainable food supply. Here is a country which is a very a tiny peninsula like Qatar, and the investment partnership can, you know, can generate a huge amount of exporting food supply. The first thing we did was when Professor Karunadasa was is here, I, I could see him. We did a conference way back in 2016. The minister Hakim was there, and we saw the opportunities. The first tipping point was to bring in Lulu, one of the hypermarket chain, uh, which was, you know, which was planning to come, and we said we will support them. And today they have the warehouse here. They are importing vegetables or essentials from Sri Lanka. This is just a beginning. Imagine you have sustainable food security required because they produce oil, but they, the agriculture format is limited. And when it comes to industries, we want more small and medium-sized entrepreneurs who want to create global representations using Qatar, using free zones, using the, the incentives, market liberalization for small and medium-sized entrepreneurs, whether debt or equity, we want to make sure we facilitate as an institution. We, by our presence here, our representative will make sure 
that we take these business houses. Almost 200 small and medium-sized entrepreneurs are already there in, in, uh, in Qatar. Sri Lankan companies are there. But we want more. We want to take them and show them if you have a know-how, transfer of knowledge is possible technology-wise or otherwise industry specifics, we can converge and see Qatar Development Bank can come to support. They have a plan now. If you have a know-how, they're ready to provide nearly $250,000. That's a nearly a million Qatar real equivalent is what they have initiated in a program called ITMAR on the equity side. On the debt side, commercial banks like Doha Bank, we are supporting many Sri Lankan companies. Out of 200 companies, many of Sarath is here, my, one of my relationship manager. We support incoming Sri Lankan companies. By our presence here, we want to take bigger, small corporates. We also want to bring in the business houses. The Commerce Minister was telling me when I met him subsequent to his visit, we want to take Qatar delegation. We, in fact, we had initial plan, myself and Ambassador, we wanted to set up a Qatar Sri Lankan Business Council. We want to bring in Qatar delegation. And the business houses will come here, explore the opportunities. What are the various niche which we can look at objectively and build this partnership to promote the bilateral values. And then see what sort of investment required, what sort of seed capital required, what sort of debt required. And then commercial banks can come to the support the mission. There is a bigger opportunity now with the crisis on. Now it turned out to be an opportunity in Qatar now with the market liberalization. Small and medium-sized entrepreneurs is, is what Qatar is hinging on as a backbone for sustainability. And that's where I, I call upon the Sri Lankan corporates to come in. Small and medium-sized to come in. Explore the opportunity to set it up. And while it is a bilateral partnership, we bring the Qatar delegation. Similarly, we take the Sri Lankan delegation to show what opportunity they can build in, what sort of capital requirement they have, how they can fill the vacuum, or taking as a commercial gate. Because if you look at the bigger opportunity, like you have, I was telling the governor today, you have the very strong economic fundamentals as an investment climate. This is the best investment climate. We need to sell it across the globe, sell it across the Gulf to start with. Your investment law of four is quite productive, number one. Number two, the investment protection agreement which you have signed is second to none. Your multilateral investment protection which is de designed by United Nations is also second to none. And that should be showcased. If you guarantee such investments, it is easy to attract investment partnership. And that's where we want to do. We want to facilitate by, by our presence here, by our footprint here. And similarly, taking this opportunity and showcase the, the commercial considerations. Because cost of capital is cheaper. Doing business in the Gulf is cost effective. Cost effective labor you can take from here. Sri Lankan skilled workers, unskilled workers, you can take them across and set up an industry in an industrial zone. There are three industrial zones in, in Qatar itself. And again, access to finance, if it is cheaper, cost of effective labor, you integrate, and cost of capital is cheaper, it is easy for you to manufacture, and then take it across. So whichever way we can work it out, we can design to deliver the value streaming. And that is an important opportunity we should relish. Like this, I can go on in terms of manufacturing or aviation or maritime or even the financial side, if you look at it. The governor was outlining the, the financial stability. The recent IMF report, and again, I mean, IMF funding has been a feather in the cap that shows clearly international community has reposed enough confidence in Sri Lanka. We as an institution, we, as on date, we have over 400 billion, rather million dollars as exposure to financial institutions. Just, just the beginning. We want to scale it up. By looking at our footprint, other financial institutions will come in. That's all we did. When we went to Sri Lanka, rather Singapore in 2006, Qatar National Bank came in after a couple of years. When we went to China in 2007, they replicated the same model in 2011. So it's just one Qatari bank, one Gulf bank start coming in, and political side, there is more convergence, and policy frameworks are fine-tuned, then you will find more and more 
financial institutions can come in as well. And that will trigger more opportunity for foreign direct investments. And that is the purpose of it. If you look at the changing dynamics which the governor has outlined, it's very interesting. You are already compliant with IF, I mean, you know, Basel III. You're looking at opportunity for a fintech, business process outsourcing, knowledge process outsourcing, digital governance you're looking at, IFRS 9, the re-regulations which is setting additional advantage for capital infusions around the world. There could be industry consolidation or investment partnership on the financial side as well. A lot of reorganization taking place, a transformation taking place on the financial side by regulatory framework. That's what the governor was outlining today. You know, these are opportunities which will converge over the period of time. As long as we understand and showcase and disseminate the information which are required to the right kind of destinations, it's important. And right kind of partnership can be built in. If you look at the infrastructure creations, we need Qatari companies. Qatari companies have investments around the world for real estate, around the world for uh, affordable housing. That's we can bring in again as an opportunity to inculcate in bilateral terms. So the list goes on. So the, our purpose of today's arrival is to enlighten and disseminate the information between B2B with the kind of support we are getting from the central bank as well as the finance minister and the political alliance which we are seeing in, in the last three years after the His Highness visit, the president visit, the commerce minister visit, and again, the health minister was there. His Excellency Rajita was also there, and he was, he was meeting our finance minister, His Excellency Ali Sharif Ali Mahdi. And he was trying to sh showcase. And we can develop this, the, the political partnership, political alliance, and technocrats can come in, business B2B can come in, and then the commerce will flourish. T trade will, will go on. In terms of multilateral trading, we, can, we are going to leverage. That's another opportunity which we can create. We have operations today, in, not only in, in the Gulf, UAE or Qatar or Kuwait, we also have in India, we have in Bangladesh. There are free trade agreements which you are embarking on. It's an important discipline. You have to liberalize the market space which you are in the right direction. As the governor and the finance minister said, you are in a defining moment to launch even the financial district. And that's where we have to see what sort of reorganization required in a globalized world and what sort of multilateral partnership we can bring in where Qatar and the rest of the Gulf banks have got footprints and how we can scale up. It's not only you know, Qatar to Sri Lankan financial institutions bilateral partnership or increasing the or scaling up the placement. We can also look at in terms of trade finance, wherever we have footprints, wherever your opportunities get enlarged, like Bangladesh, for example. If you sign a free trade, it's an important opportunity for those who, those Gulf banks who are engaged in taking measurable risk in Bangladesh. And Sri Lankan financial institutions, we can supplement trade support. Those are opportunities which we can create over the period of time. So it's endless in terms of looking at the opportunities. I'm confident with the proximity and the human capital investment and the political will which we are seeing today, it's just a beginning, Doha Bank has set in the footprint. We are going to commercially leverage, bilaterally look at the trade opportunities. We are going to look at the investment opportunities in various segments. I only narrated for a want of time, only few of the opportunities, but we have endless possibilities. And looking at the Gulf as one, for you, irrespective of the political blockade, your opportunities, Sri Lankans are there, in throughout the Gulf, in millions, if you look at the overall integration of Gulf states, six states which I mentioned, if it is 140,000 Sri Lankans only in Qatar, you can see what your demographic dynamics in terms of Gulf states. That's a huge investment. If you look at the Qatar remittance itself, it's over $500 million, $511 million, to be pretty precise, we remitted last year. There are bigger opportunities to bring in foreign exchange through the the financial houses here. We used to have a very strong relationship. In fact, Sampath Bank used to have a residing representative in, in Doha those days. I'm talking about 2004. We have to build this partnership with various financial institutions from here. We have to look at other leasing or non-banking financial houses located in Sri Lanka, what sort of investment partnership in case if there are higher capital requirement comes in. 
we can explore this opportunity as well. So whether it is remittance or, uh, or banking as a whole or trade or commerce, we can look at, explore the opportunity to build this partnership for the coming, for the coming days. That is the very purpose of submission. Once again, we are delighted to be here and it's our gratitude goes to Central Bank Governor as well as the Finance Minister who are kind enough to be here. It shows how they care for the, the development of Sri Lanka. It shows the commitment which they demonstrate for institutions uh, uh, who are coming from foreign and abroad. And this is just a beginning. I'm sure more and more Qatari banks will come, more and more Gulf banks will come, and they will promote the bilateral opportunity for Sri Lanka and for generations to come. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your kind attention. Thank you.